Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to make this message. The title of this message is People that do not believe in the rapture really do not understand what took place at the cross. Because if you think about it, Jesus Christ, He took all of our sins upon Himself. Every single one of them. But not just that, but the wrath and judgment of God fell upon Jesus so that it does not have to fall upon us that is the cup that Jesus was looking into when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane when he, he prayed three times Father if there's another way let this cup pass from me but not my will but your will be done so the tribulation period well, the time of Jacob's trouble is clearly judgment falling upon the world, which has no purpose for the church to be here whatsoever. And the Bible is very clear on that subject that the church will not be present. So I want to get into this because we are saved from wrath. That's why the Bible clearly teaches us in Romans chapter 8. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Not some, not a little, not a few. It says none. There is none. No condemnation whatsoever. Believe me, when you're in the tribulation period, you're going to be feeling, you're going to be seeing the, the condemnation. That this world is being condemned by God. The condemnation is going to be falling on this world. Now I want to read this verse here. <clears throat> because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience and then the other one is found in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 okay Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience and then go back go to Romans chapter 1 <clears throat> and you can start from verse 18 for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness and then you can even find it in uh, yeah, Romans chapter 2, verse 8. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obtain unrighteousness, anguish and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. Like the scripture is very clear that judgment is coming. Okay? Even Jesus said, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. And then John chapter 3, verse 36, let me see. John chapter 3, verse 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So these people that don't believe in the rapture, basically they're saying that the wrath of God abides upon them. And many of these people try to say, you know what, the tribulation is not the wrath of God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. My Bible clearly tells me the very opposite. And we're going to get into all these verses in a minute. Okay? We're going to get into all of these verses. But even, did you know even John the Baptist talked about uh, <clears throat> the coming wrath? The coming wrath. Okay? It says it clearly, it's coming. That's why he was warning the people of his day to flee it. 
Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Scripture is clear that wrath is coming. And even, okay, wait, even here, it says God always reserves his judgment for his enemies. And we are not God's enemies. We are his children. Okay? <clears throat> Look at this. And Nam, chapter 1, verse 2. God is jealous, and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and his furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his advisors, adversaries, and he reserves wrath for his enemies. How much more clear do you want it? Reserves wrath for his enemies. And there's so many scriptures clear, clearly talking about this coming wrath. Okay, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Now, yeah, first we'll go to Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their currents will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. I will punish the world for its evil, and the, awake, and the wicked for their iniquity. And then, therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of her place. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. It was Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, for it is the time of Jacob's troubles. But there is none like it. Daniel chapter 12 Scripture is clear that judgment's coming. Daniel chapter 12 And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time and at that time your people shall be delivered talking to the Jews. Daniel is clearly referring to the Jewish people. And plus, it's the time for Israel. It's restoration. It's the time of Jacob's troubles. So for the post-tribbers and the mid-tribs, trying to put the church in there, which totally is not referring to the church whatsoever, they're totally messing up God's program that he has planned for the church. Sorry, they're messing up God's program that he has for Israel totally messing it up because right now we're in the dispensation okay God only works with one group of people at a time the Jews rejected Jesus Christ so God has called himself a church he's he's made himself a bride right now God's focus of attention is on the body of Christ he's working with the body of Christ and when that last Gentile believer is saved zap we're out of here to the glory of God Jesus Christ is coming back. That you can see that right in. Uh, let's go back to the book of Romans. You see, Paul even talks about it in Ephesians again. Romans chapter eleven, verse twenty-five. For I do not de desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. You see, it's a mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. That blindness, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in until the fullness because once the fullness of the Gentiles is in we're, we're leaving 
and then God's going to focus his attention back upon the nation of Israel and Israel is going to go through the tribulation to come into salvation. It's very clear from scripture. And if you go to Ephesians, I'm going to read that again. Let's go to Ephesians. Paul says it here, but he says it here in a different way. Ephesians chapter 1 from 9 to 10 says, Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he published in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in what? In Christ both which are in heaven, because those that have died in Christ, and which are on earth, we who are alive, and it says, in him, because we are sealed to the day of redemption, and so on. And we're leaving. Scripture is very clear on that subject. God, <clears throat> so by these post-tribbers and mid-tribbers, trying to put the church into the tribulation, it's totally confusing and messing up God's program, that he has planned for Israel, which, which is slowly cool. It's just crazy. You know, the Bible is very clear. Now, let us go to Zephaniah. Okay? It says it clearly about God's judgment being poured out on the earth here. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 and on. Right here. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and is hezzing quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty man shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and delusion, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the four fifth cities, against the high towers. I will bring distress upon man, and they shall walk like blind man, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust on their flesh, like refrange. Neither their silver nor their gold <coughs> shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be de devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedily reduce of all those who dwell in the land. Okay? And now, let us go to, uh, so we saw clearly that the day of the Lord is the, is the great, tri is the tribulation. Clear from scripture, the day of the Lord. It's cruel and wrath. That we saw in Isaiah chapter 13 verse 9. <clears throat> so Paul is encouraging people right here in uh, 1 Thessalonians. <clears throat> but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you, to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord, which is the tribulation period, the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then... Sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pain upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Because the Antichrist is going to come on the scene. He's going to sign a seven-year peace treaty. They're going to say, peace and safety has finally come. Peace and safety. They're going to be bragging about it. And then, boom, suddenly, the tribulation is going to hit them. And they shall not escape the tribulation. They're not going to escape the wrath of God, regardless of what they're doing. All these uh, military bases that are that have created underground uh, cities, all that's going to cave in on them. God, you cannot hide from God's wrath. God's wrath will, is clearly unescapable. For the inhabitants of the earth, it's upon a Christ-rejected world, and primarily for the time of Jacob's trouble and judgment of the nations of the world that have rejected Jesus Christ, that want to continue living in sin, and so on. God's going to judge them for that. So Paul goes on, and they shall not escape. And he explains to them, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. 
For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that rather we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. You see, therefore, that's, very, that's a very powerful word. Let me, let me read that again there. Let me see where it was. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that rather we awake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. How in the world can you encourage one another and edify one another if you know you're going to go through hell on earth? You can't. It's totally impossible. And yet, Paul says it clearly right there. Like all the other passages that we, that we read before, that the day of the Lord is clearly talking about the wrath of God, the judgment that will be falling on this world. And yet, he says, God has not appointed us to wrath. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to be concerned because that has, that's totally has nothing to do with the church whatsoever. Jesus Christ, he took care of that at the cross. He took all the judgment. Not some of it, but all of it. These people that don't believe in that, they're trying to make Jesus' death on the cross like nothing. They're trying to decorate it, saying it was nothing powerful. So they're trying to add more works to the cross. Because they're trying to picture the tribulation as some kind of purgatory where they have to purify themselves. But yet my Bible tells me that the blood of Jesus Christ makes me whole. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. You guys know the song. The blood of Jesus Christ purifies us from all sin. The Bible is very clear on that subject. So don't believe any imposter that tries to teach you otherwise. And even in uh, here, he's, he's encouraging them here as well. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 from 9 to 10, he says, For what matter of entry we had towards you, how you turned from idols to serve the true and living God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, who he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who what? Who delivers us from the wrath to come. From the wrath to come. <clears throat> and if we go to Timothy, chapter, three, chapter 4, yeah. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. I'll start from verse 6. For I am already being poured out as a drunk, offering and the time of my departure is at hand i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing how in the world can you love his appearing if you know that you're going to go through hell on earth and, and this here would make no sense. You might as well would rip this passage out of your Bible if this was the case here. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearance of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, we're, command, we're not commanded to be looking for the tribulation, to be looking for the Antichrist. We are commanded to look for Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. It's very clear. But those people that believe they're going through the tribulation, they're commanded to be looking for signs to Jesus' second coming. Because there are no signs for the rapture. That's why we are commanded to be looking for his coming. It's very clear. The rapture will happen suddenly and it will happen without warning. Okay? And <clears throat> trying to put the... What's it called? Because they're trying to say that the wrath of God is going to happen at the end of the tribulation, which is totally ludicrous. It's totally against scripture. Think about it. That cannot be because scripture clearly denies it anyway. We just, like the scriptures we just saw, clear. The day of the Lord is the wrath of God. For when they say peace and safety, are you really going to say peace and safety at the end of the tribulation? Where half of the world has already been annihilated? And yet all the armies of the earth are going up against Jerusalem? 
Like, it's totally ludicrous, people. Believe what is written in the Bible. Believe what is written, man. Seriously. So I want to get into this. So we saw, for God has not appointed us to wrath, correct? Which means, right here, Revelation chapter 6, verse 17, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? So if we're not appointed to wrath, then we cannot be in the great day of his wrath. Common sense. And it's clear from scripture. But I want to get into this. Just to show you guys, straight from the Bible, the pages of Holy Scripture, these people that try to say, we're, we're just totally wrong. These mid-tribbers trying to say, oh, the wrath of God doesn't fall until the midpoint, blah, 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 blah. All these heresies, all these false doctrines that they're teaching is so clear from Scripture that God's judgment is poured out way before then. The first seal that is poured out is the Antichrist, and then the second one takes peace from the earth, and it goes on and just gets worse and worse as it progresses. Let's read it. Now, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. So, it's Jesus opening the seal. So, you're trying to tell me that Jesus is going to be pouring wrath upon his own body? And yet, he already took care of that at the cross? Seriously, it's just it's crazy. Now, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the <coughs> seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, he who sat on it had a bull, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. And another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to, granted to the one sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was a given to him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hands. This is clearly talking about the global economic collapse that is coming during the tribulation period. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quarter of wheat for a denarios and three quarters of barley which is bread talking about bread okay for a denarios and do not harm the oil and the wine so it's going to take your day's wages whatever you earn at, at your job in one day that's what it's going to cost you to buy bread okay do not harm the oil and the wine when he opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the four living creatures saying come and see so I looked and behold a pale horse and he and the name of the pale okay, wait. and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed with him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword with hunger which is going to be a global famine hunger you can imagine that a big famine is going to break out worldwide. It's going to cut off the food supply and everything. All the droughts and everything. No more food. With death and by the beasts of the earth. Imagine. When the, the, the animals are going to get hungry. They're going to start eating people. This is going to be a horrible time. Okay? And this here is clearly talking about people that become Christians during the tribulation period. That are going to be slaughtered for the name of Christ. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, and this proves here as well, that these, these false teachers, these post-tribbers and mid-tribbers try to teach that God's supernaturally going to protect them during the tribulation. This scripture right here totally disproves what they're teaching you guys. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to, them, to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was complete. You see, it's just getting worse as time goes on. 
And let's continue here. Verse 12. <clears throat> I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. So what was the result of this great earthquake? Well, let's continue reading. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a... This is all judgment from God, clear, clearly showing you before the seventh trumpet is sounded. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its lake peaks when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky rolled as a squirrel when it is rolled up, and every mountain, look at that, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And it goes on. And the kings of the earth, the great man, the mighty man, okay, the kings of the earth, the great man, the rich man, and the commanders, and the mighty man, every slave, and every free man hid themselves in the caves. Ah, oh, they hid themselves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? And then Revelation chapter 7 is amazing. The 144,000 are evangelizing, they come on the scene, and if you go to verse 9, a great multitude that no man can number. People are getting saved left and right. That is talk. This is a different body. This is not the body of Christ here. This is a different body because they don't have crowns on their head. They have palm branches and so on. Yeah, it's clear that we are, we're not appointed to this because where do they come out of? Remember, we're not appointed to the tribulation. We're not appointed because the tribulation is God's wrath. Where does it say that they came out of? Let's read it. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said, to me, these are the ones who have come out of the what? The great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So it's not us because we're not going to be in the great tribulation. We're totally talking about a different group of people here. But I want to get into this. This is very powerful, this part. I, like I was never thought of this before. <clears throat> like where it said in verse 12, I love when he opened the sixth seal and behold there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. Think about it. When there's a great earthquake, there's going to be a massive of life taken here. Like we saw, we saw that massive. Over a fourth of the population was killed by a hunger, sword, death, and the, the wild beasts of the earth. Now imagine when this one is happening, a great earthquake. Why did the sun become black? Well, think about it. When there's a great earthquake, what, what's a, what, it says a great earthquake. It doesn't say a big earthquake. It says great. What's the first thing that happens immediately after a huge earthquake? Well, obviously, tsunami warnings. Imagine when this happens. All, all the cities of the world are on the west coast, east coast, of Japan, all those places. There's going to be huge tsunamis. But what, make, what makes the sun dark? Well, let's continue reading. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky rolled as a squirrel when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Was moved out of its place. So imagine that. Volcanoes are going to erupt. Imagine all the volcanoes of the world erupting at the exact same time. That's going to cause the sun to be darkened. And and about the stars falling and the, the sky rolling up. This is all the wrath of God. This is the judgment of God falling upon the world here. <clears throat> it's very clear. And then if you go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 9, what does it say? If anyone has an ear, let him hear. The word church is left out because the church is not here at this time. Right here in uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 22, where it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. After that, you no longer see the church mentioned. Why? Because she's raptured in chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 1, she's raptured up. <clears throat> because we're singing a song right here. In chapter 5, verse 9, some people that, I don't know, I guess they don't have any understanding or anything at all, they try to say that this is angels here, which is totally ludicrous. 
anybody that has a brain that works will understand that this here is not talking about angels. Listen to it. They're singing a song after they got rewarded and so on. In chapter 5, they continue singing. This is what they sang. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the what? The squirrel and to open its seals. For you were slain, talking about Jesus' death on the cross, and have redeemed us. So we have been redeemed. Okay? Angels are not redeemed. Where were they redeemed from? Well, let's continue reading and find out. And have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. This sounds like the, the, the body of Christ. Different races, different peoples, different tribes, different tongues, speaking different languages, and different nations. But that makes the body of Christ. Okay? Which is the church. And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Exactly. I'm talking clearly about the... It's so clear, man. It's, like, it's so clear. So don't be fooled by these false teachers out there. <clears throat> Jesus' death on the cross paid it all. <clears throat> Look at this. I just flipped it here. It's, like, it's amazing. Let me read this before I close. <clears throat> this is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Christ suffered once and for all for sin. We don't have to suffer because he's the, he paid the ultimate price. He paid the, he's the ultimate sacrifice. Scripture is very clear on that subject. You know? <clears throat> we are saved from wrath. It is clear from Scripture. We escape it. Because Jesus is coming to get us way before and that happened at the signing of the peace treaty and the Antichrist cannot come onto the world scene until the restrainer is taken out of the way, which is the Holy Spirit. Yet the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. You can read that in Psalms 139. So who is it that's removed? It's those in whom he lives. It's the body of Christ that is removed. And then and only then can he come onto the scene, which means he cannot sign that peace treaty, which begins the tribulation period until something is removed, which is the body of body of Christ. And like we just said, there's just so many reasons. So clear. Jesus paid it all on the cross. We're not appointed to wrath. The tribulation period is a time where God deals with a Christ-rejected world, pouring his wrath upon them, giving them one last opportunity before he comes back at the second coming. Because when he comes back, he's setting up his 1,000-year reign millennial kingdom. And he's dealing with Israel. They'll come to know Jesus Christ as their true Messiah at the end of the tribulation period. So this is all i got to say. I'm letting you guys go from here. And brothers and sisters in Christ, keep looking up. Jesus is indeed coming very soon. Just live ready, stay ready, and be ready. And this is all i got to say. And God bless you all.